Today, we're building a custom welding cart. Twin bottle, welder, plasma cutter, chop saw, drawer in the bottom for my TIG stuff. Wanna see how it's done? Keep watching. Shop space is a premium, so I did the most logical thing and I bought a new welder. Yep, Millermatic, ACDC 220, TIG, MIG, stick, everything. And the idea is to get rid of multiple welders and just focus on this one do-all machine. Um, that's my old welder, just a 110 volt Lincoln Weld Pack 100. I bought in 98 or so, been great. And I have this big old stick, ACDC stick machine, Lincoln stick machine, awesome machine, works great. It's just big and bulky and I don't like moving it around very often. So put all the eggs in one basket so I just will have one welder. So the idea was to just put it on my original welding cart that I built in the early 2000s, but it doesn't fit even remotely. So we're gonna build a brand new welding cart. A couple features I want, I'm tired of the welder being so low to the ground. I mean, this welder, I've, I've used, I've put so many hundreds of pounds through this welder that it's like a third hand. I can just reach down there and blindly flip the switches and know exactly what I'm doing, adjust the settings. But this thing is so computer controlled. You know, you have to be able to see the screen to adjust the dials and stuff like that. So I'm gonna put it, I wanna put it about counter height. So I wanna make a new, instead of reworking this thing, I'm gonna make it a brand new um, welding cart. I'm gonna put it at counter height. Um, put a shelf below where I can put, you know, a plasma cutter or other stuff. And on the bottom, maybe a big old drawer that I can pull out. Um, and I need to make it hold two bottles, since it does TIG, where the old cart didn't do anything. Um, well, only had to hold one bottle. So, let's get at it. Since I want the welder so high, I need as much weight down as low as possible. So I'm actually going to overbuild the base. I'm going to build it two, like a truck rail, two rails. Um, this is quarter inch, two and a half by three. Way overkill. Um, we're going to use this brand new, well I've had it for a couple months but I haven't used it too much because I've been using my old one. Picked up, this is the S380 from Evolution. Um, it has like quick adjust, like angle gauges and stuff. Such a nice machine that I upgraded. Um, absolutely, if you haven't seen my video on these machines, on these type of machines, it's mind blowing how fast, you know, this stuff is for cutting, you know, this is quarter inch thick. So watch me cut through this big old chunk in seconds. So I've got 80% of my parts cut out, ready to weld together. The Evolution saw did a nice job. It does leave a little bit. Instead of having abrasive dust everywhere, you do get these little metal filings, but I know I've showed this in other videos. I just have a Coke bottle, put a slit in it, and you just got a, some bigger ceramic magnets. And I can just wipe what it doesn't catch in the catch tray. I just clean it all up, go to the garbage can, just shake it, and they all just come right off because the magnets are able to kind of bounce around in there. I just take that and set that aside. We can start welding everything together. Um, this is kind of what it looks like, my rough idea. So these are my main two rails. These are my uprights. I notched them so that they'll, I want the outside flush. I want nice and smooth and flush. Got two uprights. You've got a bunch of just scrap steel to go in between, kind of brace it. Uh, the number one rule with making a welding cart is you can't buy anything. Everything just has to be laying around. The only thing you could possibly buy is casters. But whether it's a shopping cart or made out of an old hand truck dolly, 
you can't buy anything. That's the number one rule in my book. So we'll just start welding all this stuff together, tacking it, uh, burning it in, making sure everything's square and straight, and we'll go from there. Ooh, electronics. a little bit to make sure it was all just nice and perfectly square just wanted to make sure you know this is the foundation the base of it so it's all nice and square now the casters are going to here I still have to build a shelf and a drawer and then a shelf up here I think right off of that same spot there's gonna be a shelf that sticks out the same as this so that's what these notch pieces are for so then I come back along here and stick out. The weld will sit down in them. So this is the top shelf. This is where the angle iron is going to go. I could just butt weld it here and butt weld a piece back here to hold the tanks. Um, but I ended up notching it because I want it to go around. This is from my woodworking days. I spent nearly a decade doing fine woodwork, carpentry. And you got to have the grain going the same way to keep strength. So I'm actually going to... Um, dado that out so now this will sit down in there and be flush and keep this piece instead of just welding all together it's just me it's really not necessary but to do that i will just take the uh circular saw set up the uh, the evolution metal cutting circular saw set up the depth do a couple slices and notch out a, a little piece and tight. You got a weld in there. It'll be nice and flush on the outside. I'll grind the welds flush. But it's just a really strong joint. So these are tucked in. They're all nice and flush. I actually did about, this shelf is free floating out here. So I did about a quarter inch rise on it. So that should account for any, you know, the 50, 60 pounds that go on it. And instead of just doing a 45 up here, I like actually doing these joints on, um, especially on exposed areas for angle iron it just welds up nicer it gives a nicer instead of having a sharp corner trying to weld it just breaks it away these little this little bead area will give you a better um a better fitment and you can get a better um width wise because you just cut this inside one you make this inside one touch and so i wanted to be 18 on the outside these are one inch so i just made this exactly 16 you know i'm a little bit even off right there it doesn't matter i just make sure that outside one is exactly where i want it to be and I should be exactly 18. Um, yep. So weld that in. We just need to make sure that we're square now with the bottom. Just this is this whole shelf isn't leaning one way or the other. So I've got the top all done. I've got all my joints sanded. These this I put a little divider in there. This side will hold the welder. This side will hold the plasma cutter. Um, down on the base. Put a couple little, I decided I threw the bottles up here for a second. I decided I wanted just a little bit of a wrap. I want to, you know, this sits like almost five inches off the ground with the casters. And so these bottles are 80 pounds a piece. I just, I don't want them too high. I don't want to put a whole lip and slide it down. I have another design like that. I don't like it. So I'm just going to throw them up in. And then at the top, we'll probably just put a couple holes and do a chain or probably just a bungee strap, a heavy duty bungee strap crossed here. But I think we're pretty good. Um... Got the caster wheels all mounted, uh, test fitted. They are post type. Ideally, I'd get flange type, but this is what was on the other welding cart. And I'm just going to use what I have because these actually worked amazingly well. I upgraded to these ones years ago. So this is all 14 gauge material, which is just shy of eighth inch thick. It's actually pretty decent size. So this is going to go here. We're just making the box. We're making a shelf 
and the cubby for the, um, the drawer to go in. And these are going to go just weld like that. With a little bit of a lip, so whatever you put on here just doesn't fall off when you're moving around. So I've got that all, the, the uh, drawer housing slash shelf all put together. It's nice and sturdy. Um, the sides are all one piece up, and then these are just little pieces I tacked on. Well, they're permanent on there, but I left gaps underneath everything. Because if you, and the front and the back, because you know if it's a, it's going to get, you know, grinding dust, everything built up on here. And I want it to be able to fall off one way or the other. It can't fall off these sides, but it can fall off the front or the back. So now we just got to do the drawer. As far as the drawer, generally, I would just take a piece of sheet metal and do it like origami and build it up. But this is a really deep, this is a really tall side. So I'd need to do it at least out of something like 14 gauge. I do have a video, it's called like uh, turn filing cabinets into toolboxes, where I show you how to um, turn just sheet metal into drawers. And I made a bunch of those. For this, I'm gonna use something thicker. I actually have a bunch of, have a bunch of this stuff. This is actually a Coke machine, like a Coke can vending machine. This is the stuff that goes down the side that prevents people from prying. You know, there's two huge pieces of metal that overlap. They're about an eighth inch thick. It keeps people from prying in there. They used to be um, fixed and repaired and resold and flipped a whole bunch of Coke machines years ago. I don't do it anymore, but I used to. So I got a bunch of spare parts and stuff. But I'm going to use this for the sides um, to make all my side rails. I do have, have a set of full extension glides. This is about 22 inches deep. I think these are 20 or 24. Here are 20 inch full extensions, just what I have laying around, so that'll work just fine. Um, for the bottom of the uh, drawer in there, I'm actually gonna use expanded metal because inevitably the drawer is just gonna fill up with grinding dust and everything else, and I want it just to all fall out. So the bottom of the drawer is gonna be expanded metal. So I've got the drawer guides and everything mounted on. Now if this was woodwork, generally you build an entire box inside and then you put this all together, you, and then the panel you have on the front, you actually drill larger holes and then you would screw in to this that, so you can actually move this around um, so it's perfectly centered in the opening. So you drill larger holes and you move it, shift it around. Um, we don't need that strength in metalworking, so we're just going to put the faceplate on. But it does make it a little bit tricky because I want it to be recessed back in here because I don't want a lip. I don't want anything falling into the drawer, so I want it to be recessed in there like that with a pretty even reveal, about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So we'll have to do that and then tack it, pull it out, tack it, break a tack, and see if we can get it lined up. One of the issues with full extension glides is they don't work too good unless you have a ton of weight in them. So, so now I need to make some sort of handle. I'm just going to use some square tubing. Let's use the Evolution. Let's cut it uh, 22 and a half. Let's cut a couple angles on it. Let's see what we end up with. If you guys are even remotely interested in this saw, it's amazing. I'll put a link below. You guys can check it out. Absolutely amazing. Just a, a life game changer. This seriously just feels like a cutting wood. Piece of square tube, a couple chops and chops here and there. Now we have a beautiful handle. Yeah, right 
So I ended up welding in a couple of little gussets, um, mainly just for this front right here to help support the front. That'll really help out. Did one on each side. And then just for fun, I put one back here just to match and then just one down there. Kind of just brought the styling together a little bit more. Um, in the back, I just had some little flat pieces and I put it in there, put the bottle in there, made them so they contour through the bottle and made them so they hold the bottles apart because I need the bottles apart because the gas lines come out of the welder directly right here. And so I need them to come out, they'll dive down here, come up and connect. And then these corners came in handy because I can hold stuff like pig rod, stuff like, stuff like that. Um, right here, these were originally on my original plan, um, handles or something to that effect. The, the welder comes up right in this corner and it's square. And so you can't really wrap your hand around it. So what I'm gonna do is actually take this round bar because it fits right down in that hole beautifully. But like I said, you can't grab around it. So what I'm gonna do on each side is I'm just gonna take the round bar, it'll stick down in and I'm just gonna S-bend it just a little bit out so you can grab it, um, move it around, but you can also wrap the power cord around it on each side, hang the power cord with the plasma cutter and the welder just off the sides. But then if you want, you, you can actually grab it and move it. go. I was actually going to weld them in there or actually even just weld some flats on there so they're square but kind of sit in there. I kind of like it. If I like them in one position maybe I'll put a tack on there. So that's the idea. I think we're besides putting casters on which is no big deal I think it's ready for paint so I guess time to bust out the paint and just start painting it. Putting some paint on quick tip for you spraying expanded metal. Biggest problem people do Spray it like this. See how many holes there are? Look at that. They almost all go away. So if you spray it like this, at this angle, you cover it all. And then to get the other side, you just spray it at that angle. And it all goes away. Also, another trick is, if I'm going to spray the surface back here, is just to put it over the surface I'm spraying. And so any overspray just goes directly onto something I want to spray anyway. So we've got it all painted up, everything's together. Um, but now, I like retro paint, so I actually want to paint a logo. So I created a logo, I got it stenciled on there, um, just with a pencil, so I know what I want to do. So now it's just a matter of actually hand lettering it. Let's get started. There we go, just having fun. Sparkomatic really means nothing. I just wanted something vintage, you know. You got the 50s stuff where everything was omatic this and omatic that, so sparkomatic it is. So I guess now it's just time to load it up and see what it, if it fits everything, I guess. See if I did a, a good job of making it actually functional. So the goal was to make it fit above and below the end of my workbench down here that I don't use anyway. Um, so let's just... Beautiful! Exactly what I wanted. And then the... Uh, I'm actually really liking the uh, higher height. It really allows me to uh, 
utilize the electronic display and all the functions on it. But thanks for watching, guys. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Have a good one. See ya. Bye. Okay. I'm going to leave you in here with this chip with pork on it. Okay. And when I come back, you better still be there, okay? Got it? I'm trusting you. Are you kidding me? It's still there. Oh, you can have it. Hey, good job. Hey, get it. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can get it. Go ahead. Here. I'll give it to you. Here you go. Good job. What are the chances we can go for two for two, huh? What happens if I leave this chip here and we leave for like 10, 15 minutes? Can you do it? Can you? Huh? Should we shake on this one? Should we? Okay, we'll try. What are what are the chances? Yo. Okay, you didn't eat the chip, but you're eating the other food? Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. The chip's there, but I saw your butt. Get in. Get in. Okay, the chip is still there, but I saw your butt in the bag of chips, eating all the chips. I guess I didn't say don't eat those. Okay, get in. Oh, you're in so much trouble. Well, how dare you? You ate my chips? Oh. Oh, do you feel guilty? You look like you, you're really sad. Oh, it's okay, I love you too.